Hello garden lovers and welcome to Marvin Gardens 2021 July and you probably know that I call July um, the high holy days of gardening and a little bit of August too but um, we are there it is happening and uh, Let's get started, shall we? Now, I'm just going to spin around here. There's Mr. Franklin. He's enjoying himself out here. And uh, Jolie was just over here a second ago. Um, but we'll start with the herb garden. And um, Mr. Coco, where we start lots of times. Uh, he is keeping a good watch over the garlic chives which as you can see are um, starting to uh, um, flower here so uh, uh, that's a good sign that means they're reproducing down below and uh, down here we still have um, winter time coming in and looking pretty good um, the irises as we suspected are starting to take over but we got a pretty good stand of uh, chives going here. And uh, this is dill. And uh, I'm trying to look. The, these flowers bloomed and then they turned brown. But I notice on some of them. And uh, I think right there is one of the some of them. It looks like the the flowers that were pollinated are turning into seeds, which will be dill seeds. And uh, of course, you can put the dill in your dill pickles, just like that, or, or you can wait for dill seed. Anyway, uh, so they look like they're, I guess, doing what they're supposed to do. Um, we got a, a stand of basil down here that's um, doing eh, okay. Um, but only because this is not the optimum place for things to to grow around here um, But it's doing okay. I want to show you one thing in the greenhouse, so we'll go in there um, I don't know if I showed you this last time or not, but um, This is a bonsai tree that um, We thought had completely died and we set it outside it was on its way to the compost heap and all of a sudden it started sprouting leaves and as you can tell it is far from dead it's very happy so i've just left it in here and i make sure i get it you know watered periodically but uh, it's doing fine and uh, it's it's actually the only thing that's in the greenhouse right now that's growing uh, except for there's uh, there are a couple of dachshunds right now because they followed me in there frankie and Cassie, yes. So let's go over to a bed number one and uh, see what's going on since last month. Now we'll start with uh, the end here and um, what we've got is a row of radishes and the, the leaves and everything look okay but the radishes themselves just did not develop into much of anything. Uh, so I'm afraid our second planting of radishes is just um, well, it's not going to work. So maybe I'll try a third planting when the weather gets cooler. Um, beyond that, we've got two rows of turnips. I just thinned them out. I think they're going to do fine. And um, two rows of carrots, and I know they're doing fine because I just uh, did some thinning of those, and the thinning amounted to um, uh, some almost full-size carrots uh, that we used in a a salad at a family event and uh, it turned out looking pretty good. I got minimal insect damage, if any. Um, so that brings us on to the second planting of brassicas. And uh, these first three rows right here are um, uh, cauliflower, different varieties. Um, flame star on the left, uh, white corona in the middle and uh, 
attribute on the right. And I believe the white coronas are the ones that are going to come in really early. So I've got to keep my eye on them. And then we got uh, six um, Overture Cabbage. And uh, I hope they're going to actually be Overture Cabbage. Because the last time, we, you remember, we were surprised by some mustard plants. Um, but anyway, they seem to be doing okay for now. And uh, this is the the old planting of um, uh, of uh, broccoli, and uh, like I say, I'm just sort of disappointed in this variety because um, although we keep getting stuff, um, they're um, you know they're just little tiny shoots of broccoli, and I keep snipping them off. You know when I can manage to snip them off before they bloom. Um, and uh, but it's just, they just never made these nice uh, firm heads that I was hoping for that you always hope for with uh, broccoli. Now this next row is um, uh, Brussels sprouts and if you look down in there you can probably see some Brussels sprouts starting to form on the stalks there and uh, surprisingly enough and like I say I don't know what's going on with the seeds I got from burpee but uh, there's a vacancy right there and uh, because it was a cabbage some kind of cabbage that grew so uh, I don't know what's going on um, anyway uh, this is um, our leftover um, summer squash and um, there is a nice little zucchini coming in right there um, and if you look up under there, there are some uh, lemon drop squash that are coming in, one, one of which is uh, ready to be harvested, of course. And uh, this right here on the end is um, just a mix of uh, extra tomato seedlings. And uh, they're just, you know, they're growing like gangbusters. Um, that's a pretty nice, uh, I think those are Romas. I think, uh, well, I don't know if what these are, um, but uh, they're all doing pretty gosh darn well. Now this is whatever giant variety I was growing, um, and oh, they just, they look very happy. Um, so I'm pretty encouraged, and these are just the cast-off plants, the ones that uh, were left over. So. Um, but they seem to like it in this bed anyway, so that's good. All right, uh, compost heap is, uh, other than, again, my shadow, um, pretty empty. Uh, just some um, uh, leftover vegetable matter thrown in there. Um, we've had a fair, in fact, we've had a lot of rain on um, uh, this month in... in uh, July. It's, I think, right now it stands at the third wettest July. Um, and we may well, depending on the rain that we get coming out, uh, become the wettest um, July since the 1800s, believe it or not. But we'll see. Um, a little too much rain for me, but, uh, um, but, uh, but not bad as far as the vegetables go. Uh, now, as you can see, the... Um, grow house is filling out nicely with melon vines. I was just in there today um, snipping off leaves that were droopy because I didn't, if they were infected, I didn't want them to spread the infection. And also looking for uh, uh, melon flowers, female flowers, where the, um, the uh, buds were starting to swell. And it's too early to know for sure, but I think we've got a few, and I found um, uh, one bud in there that was uh, uh, wide open. The bloom was wide open, so I found a male flower and, and touched the male flower to the female. And so hopefully, if nothing else, that one will get um, uh, pollinated. Um, now, these uh, uh, basil here... Uh, were just planted because we had a, extra plants and, and room. They are doing just fine. Uh, we also used some of those for the um, uh, the salad this weekend. And that's just a little um, marigold plant that uh, I just stuck in there again for the same reason. Then you'll see some um, 
pond irises that just come up all over the place and uh, that's interspersed with the onions. Now you'll notice that the onions uh, are bulbing nicely and they're also starting to fall over. And what does that mean? There's something wrong with the onions? No, that means they're getting ready to be harvested. So um, it looks like we're, we're not going to get the kind of harvest that we usually have, but it looks like we're going to get a harvest. And since we're still working on last year's harvest, that's no problem. Now, this is an a, um, impressive row of leeks and uh, Don Giant, to be exact. And uh, I, I think I've let them go a little longer than they should, but I'm going to probably harvest them with all the onions and uh, we'll see what we end up with. Uh, we certainly did get a nice growth amount from them this time around. Now, uh, that brings us to the second variety. We only did two varieties of onions, and as you can see, uh, uh, this is a, um, I don't know exactly, wait a minute, I do know exactly what the, the brand is, or variety is, it's called Red Wing. And uh, because I have a sign here that tells me, and um, as you can see, almost all of them are also falling over, so Within the next week or so, we are going to be harvesting this entire bed and getting it ready to do our summer planting. Oh, and by the way, I didn't mention it, but um, uh, we are still doing some things indoors, uh, starting a tray, a flat, I should say, of scallions and uh, one little marauding weed there. I'm going to get that out of there. Um, and uh, once we clear the uh, onion bed, the, this planting of um, scallions will go in one or two of the rows. Now, um, you remember that the broccoli is still growing and producing, even though I didn't really like what I was getting. Um, so rather than pull them out and plant replacements, I planted the replacements over here and uh, put a little fencing around them because dachshunds uh, do like, well, I think I think Jolie does also. Um, um, broccoli plants, any brassicas actually, and um, they will pull them before they're ready to be pulled. Okay, uh, so on this end of uh, bed number three, we have um, all these volunteer um, uh, ground cherries. Uh, and uh, as you can see from right here, um, the, the, the pods are coming in. Uh, they haven't started to turn yellowish yet, but uh, there's lots of them on there, so we're going to get lots of ground cherries in a very short time. And um, last time around, uh, we had blossoms, but now you can see that we have actual eggplants coming in. and. Um, you know those are those are small right now, but um, they're going to be full sized. Oh, I would guess uh, within a week. Those first uh, first couple of them. Uh, this is a nice stand of dragon roll pepper. Um, it's supposed to be a hot pepper. I don't know how pot, hot. Probably not too hot, if I if I know me. Um, but look at how many of them there are. Um, coming in and the plants look healthy they're blooming all over the place there's literally dozens of them on each plant and uh, these are very small plants which I wasn't really expecting um, tangerine dream but as you can see uh, they're starting to turn tangerine color um, so I figure that's when they're at their optimum uh, and so they're they're looking good. Uh, we also have some California wonders, and those plants are getting tall, and those peppers are starting to look pretty good. Although, you know, they're probably going to turn red um, if we allow them to. But they can be harvested, of course, early on. Um, next, we got thunderbolt peppers, and. Um, this is uh, 
uh, more like a long, um, I don't know, Coronito type pepper. And uh, they're coming in nicely too. I'm expecting them to, um, uh, whoops, sorry. Uh, expecting them to uh, also uh, turn red, but some of those are of the size that they are certainly harvestable at this point. Now I just pulled some uh, bib lettuce out of here. Um, this is a summer planting of lettuce um, and they're always susceptible to uh, bolting and uh, stuff like that in these warm temperatures. But um, the ones that we pulled were actually quite good. And that brings us to the end of this bed, which is the bookend planting of um, uh, ground cherries. And again, same thing. Lots of um, uh, little, little uh, fruits coming in, but the uh, sheaths are not turning yellow yet, but they will very soon. Now, um, that brings us to kind of a flower section here. These are supposed to be cone flowers, recently planted. Um, they look kind of straggly, but as I'm looking at them right now, there are some buds there. Um, there's also one that kind of got chomped off by somebody. Um, but, uh, uh, but, but I guess they're doing okay. Uh, and then this is status, and the status is, is blooming nicely purple and white flowers I wasn't really expecting well I didn't know what I was going to get out of them um, here's a, a, a cluster that hasn't bloomed yet so I'm not sure I don't know if these are all supposed to be the same color or not um, but then we have our straw flowers and they're looking just fine uh, a nice variety of colors I think this was a mix um, uh, so that you, you would get uh, multiple color varieties. I don't know if I can cut them and bring them inside for cut flowers or whether I just let them go and enjoy them while we're out here. But um, okay, uh, that brings us to okra. And um, the okra is doing just fine. That's a fully harvestable pod, a harvestable uh, small pod. There's uh, actually uh, some ones that need to be harvested uh, today because they're big enough, uh, including uh, these ones down there. If you can see them, I think you can. Uh, and then uh, we get to the uh, pole beans. This is uh, Kentucky um, Blue. Uh, we've had uh, several uh, gallon bags of them and um, if you can see here, uh, these are called asparagus yard long, and uh, they are living up to their their name. Um, these are a little, uh, not quite ready to be harvested, but we've harvested quite a few so far, so they're doing pretty well. And that's going to bring us to the amazing uh, sunflower stand, and I just need to find the right perspective to give you an idea what's going on over here. Uh, so <clears throat> there they are, uh, just the, the, the um, most senior ones are easily uh, 10 feet tall and nicely coming into bloom. And uh, they just, the sunflowers are just a lovely sight to see. It's just hard getting the right perspective for you guys to see what's going on, but uh, they're looking good. All right, so, oh, um, um, whoops, I'm not running the camera very well, but you might notice that Jolie is chomping on something. Let's see what she's chomping on. What you got, Jolie? Yes, it's a it's a tomato. You can have it. That's okay. Yes, that's a tomato, um, and uh, she's enjoying it. And there's there's more here. Oh, oh it looks like there's been some more uh, marauding of the of the tomatoes as well. Uh, I'll show that one to you later. Anyway, um, I think this 
stand right here is Mountain Magic and um, these two right here are Chadwick Cherry and um, you can see uh, lots of cherry tomatoes uh, coming in and we've already had quite a few so that's nice. Um, these lovely specimens are uh, Roma I believe and um, there's one down there uh, hopefully you can see that's close but um, not quite red enough to be picked and um, uh, the next one's over golly these were the big ones and I can't remember the variety so I'm gonna just flip all the way around because I think that's where the signs are um, so if I can give you the right variety yeah Roma Roma was these guys um, and uh, which are the paste tomatoes and this is Parks Whopper improved um, and uh, they're doing uh, very nicely you can see those guys starting to turn um, and a lot of them are getting big over there um, now I don't know if I can show you the well let me come around here see if I can peek in here and show you the one that somebody has decided was too delicious to pass up now that's definitely um, work from the dogs <laughs> I don't blame them okay oops look there's a Chadwick cherry uh, right down on the ground there and uh, so I'm gonna have to pick that one up when I come back all right so that brings us to the official uh, summer squash planting and uh, these are lemon drop um, so you see all those um, uh, round ones um, and they're coming in quite nicely um, I don't see any more crook necks uh, I might have had to pull some of those because when the plants start to look like um, this um, and the squash has all those little uh, flicks on them uh, that's an indicator that the plant itself is uh, suffering from some kind of disease and um, so I generally just yank them out at that point so that whatever they have they don't spread to the other plants uh, and then I'll just go back and replant uh, um, squash to uh, cover the vacancies here's another big lemon drop uh, uh, several of them I was wondering if there's another crook neck down here uh, yeah there's one there you, you can see it before I flip the, the leaf in front of it um, um, but I did pull up a few of those because they were not looking happy. Um, here's the uh, the bee bomb um, behind the grow house, which has the uh, the melons in it. Um, I think I need to snip most of those off and see if we can get another bloom. And then um, this is another row of leeks, which are doing yeah okay. Um, but uh, definitely, I'll probably just harvest them when I do the. Um, uh, the rest of the onions and uh, Cassie are you looking for a uh, um, a tomato to chew on there's a little one right there if you're if you're smart you might find it oh she found it but she's not getting it all right so let's go out to the asparagus patch uh, and I will, of course, pause during this time to allow for some drone footage because typically when I'm going out to the asparagus patch, I don't really have very good camera work going on. And uh, the funny thing about asparagus is that the harvest is the first thing that happens and the growing season uh, is everything else 
and there's no harvesting. Um, and by that, what I mean is, the first thing that comes up are the shoots, and that's what you want to harvest with, um, uh, with asparagus. And then uh, once you've harvested enough shoots to leave the rest of the shoots to grow for more shoots uh, later on, um, you're done. Now, it's interesting because new shoots come up all season long, and I'm going to see if I can uh, give you an example of that. Is it, I'm, I'm not quite... There you go. Uh, right towards the center there, there's a new shoot coming up that looks like a harvestable asparagus. But um, we won't harvest that. Um, we'll let that come in. We're done with harvesting. Um, but we're hoping for even more harvestable shoots to come in uh, next spring. And that's why asparagus is usually the actual first um, harvest crop that you get. Uh, and um, But there's nothing really much to show you um, during the growing season. It's just a matter of trying to keep the, uh, the stalks healthy and bug free uh, so they can grow more shoots um, next year. And uh, look at this uh, lovely marsh we've got going here. Um, I think you can see those nice cattails, which are now fully formed. Um, and we've got uh, at least 10 of them uh, in our little uh, Sky Manor swamp here. No, marsh, I guess it's really her bog. I don't, I don't know what it is. Um, but anyway, I'm so happy that we've got lots of, uh, uh, of official cattails happening. Um, the rest of this lower growing stuff is um, pond irises, as you probably know. And um, uh, the, what else I've put out here, which is not doing very well, is pond lettuce. And the reason that I put the pond lettuce out here was because it just overtook the pond. And I think I have a picture of, of that before I um, cleared them out of here. So I thought I'd throw them out here in case they get enough water to survive. So, uh, all right, let's, let's head back. Excuse me. Go into the gate here. Oops, what did I just do? Everything's okay. And close the gate. Mm -mm -mm -mm. And uh, take a look at uh, Julie. Take a look at Cassie. And Mr. Franklin. And carry on, because uh, pretty much the garden proper, I think you've seen everything. Our marigolds in the, uh, in the planters along the uh, fence line are doing pretty well. Uh, this is the um, anise hyssop uh, that, um, uh, some of which was wintered over from last year. And uh, I decided to put in pots and uh, it's doing fine. Uh, this is another perennial, and um, unfortunately I can't remember the name of it, um, but doing fine. And, uh, and this, this up some more, getting kind of smothered by the, the vine here. And um, some of the perennial uh, vines that are out here that Vanina brought. All looking good and we even got a uh, sunflower here that's 10 feet tall and there's actually a bloom up there it hasn't opened yet but it's only gonna be a matter of a day or so before it does hi guys what's going on all right so uh, uh, more marigolds in the in the uh, planters. All right, so here's our water features. And, um, whoops, I didn't mean to do that. Um, 
but you got uh, your uh, horse tails uh, I've got water um, lettuce out here and of course the pond irises that are dominating everything um, same thing over here including a, a little offshoot of the um, uh, horse tails um, all looking pretty good um, here we have uh, some uh, uh, lilies that uh, Vanina planted and uh, they're starting to bloom now uh, no you're staying here I'm going out but you're staying in and uh, there's some garden tools that's pretty exciting um, I don't think I forgot to send you anything else or show you anything else um, these are all cone flowers and uh, the thing about these cone flowers at least when they're growing here is that they eventually all fall over um, but I think they'd wor look worse if I tried to like tie them up and bundle them than if I just let them kind of spread out and fall over because um, they're still nice looking blooms and um, the pond is uh, approaching its peak um, I did clear out all those um, water lettuce lettuce plants that were just overtaking everything um, but as you can see there's lots of blooming going on and the water's pretty clear in fact the fish are a little bit hungry uh, I just did a bunch of trimming out there to uh, kind of get things under control but uh, um, it's all looking pretty good so I can't complain about that uh, the rest of the, what we got to show you and a lot of it is not so garden related um, the back deck the easy set pool which we are heating even as we speak and then we got uh, uh, a pear tree which is still loaded with pears loaded with pears um, and <laughs> did I introduce you to the uh, scarecrow or scare squirrel or wh whatever you want to call him um, anyway uh, uh, Vanina wanted to have him out here as well as this owl just to discourage anything that might be marauding the um, the, the pears and then um, amazingly enough we still have uh, quite a few nectarines happening in the nectarine tree which I guess is the best place for nectarines to be doing something right um, I haven't counted them I'm a little superstitious about counting them before they're before they finish but uh, there's there's quite a few of them out here there's no question about that so keep your fingers crossed because August is going to be um, when these guys uh, come into uh, harvestability if they're going to and not only that we've got peaches uh, less peaches than nectarines but peaches nonetheless um, so again we're just keeping our fingers crossed that uh, some of these guys make it to uh, full term uh, because I'll break my keto diet to uh, have some homegrown peaches and nectarines and pears that's for sure so um, let's take a look here um, and uh, no I'm coming in I'm coming in you, oh, I'm catching my hat on the oh, oh, oh. I'm not doing very good camera work uh, uh, and I'm not even seeing what I'm doing but I am still recording and I think you've seen everything that there is to see um, uh, I didn't show you the poinsettia um, I can uh, it's right there doing fine I don't know what we're gonna do with it when the weather gets cold because uh, it doesn't do so hot in indoors um, this little planter um, still has some uh, strawberry plants in it we got maybe uh, six strawberries out of the whole deal um, we've got uh, ornamental grass and petunias planted around um, 
I've got uh, all, all the, uh, the planters off the mini barn are doing pretty well. Um, uh, this is, of course, a stand of a huge stand of uh, pond irises. I didn't show you the, the official herb garden, but uh, the basil's doing well. The um, dill is doing the same thing that it's doing over on the other side. And but look at these seeds. You can you can clearly on this plant see the dill seeds that have formed, even though this this um, bloom is totally brown. Uh, the cilantro is um, seemed to have passed its productive stage. I, I don't know if if these seeds are something that you harvest or not, but uh, they're definitely pretty much done for. Um, garlic chives, same as the ones that are over by Coco, um, doing fine. Uh, the sage isn't looking as healthy as it was before, but it's still doing fine as well as is the rosemary and this stand of thyme um, uh, all of which we've used from time to time <laughs> get it um, and then this is the the pet memorial area which i just cleaned out a little bit um, most of the perennials that i planted here are not doing much of anything except for these um, i think they're black-eyed susans or or related to that and uh, they've come in just nicely so um, but uh, I'm up here I'm over here um, there I am um, but that's it this is like uh, uh, we're, we're at least three quarters of the way through July uh, the 2020 Olympics are going on um, in Tokyo, even though it's 2021. You all know that story. So, um, and uh, other than that, everything's going well. Uh, we're definitely qualifying as the uh, high holy days of gardening around here. Um, there's uh, things like uh, those great uh, tomatoes that we're looking forward to uh, munching on and um, everything else that happens with the uh, July garden. So is there anything else I missed um, other than my face on the camera? Uh, but who needs to see that anyway, right? Uh, let's see, let me move up just a little bit and over just a little bit and say, Happy summer, everybody. I hope you're all having a great July, and you had a great July 4th, and um, you can hear the annual cicadas behind me. Uh, the Brood X guys are all gone, um, but these guys I get every year, and um, that's always a sign of uh, mid to late July and into August, and uh, that's where we are. So this is Marvin Gardens, July 2021, and um, that's the story. So we'll see you next time in August. Bye, y'all.